I will show you how to convert a regular keyboard with a USB cable into a wireless keyboard. The modification is so simple that I think even my 8-year-old daughter could do it. I will show you all the steps and components you need. One USB keyboard that needs modification. And a DIY wireless control module. This module is developed by an individual developer named Usan. It supports three modes of operation, Bluetooth 5.3, wireless 2.0 GHz, and wide USB. It also supports quick switching between eight devices and integrates charging control. If you want to modify your keyboard, please watch the entire video. I will demonstrate the DIY method and steps in the video, sharing my experiences and lessons learned during the modification process. Let's get started. First, we need a USB keyboard. I'm using the IKBCC10 keyboard, which is a mechanical keyboard with multimedia keys. Of course, you also need a modification module. The module works by receiving commands from the USB keyboard and converting them into wireless signals to send to the USB receiver. This module supports three mods, two of G wireless, Bluetooth, and USB wire connection. You also need to prepare a lithium battery, which you can either salvage from a tool or purchase. I borrowed a 2000 mAh battery from my daughter's tool in exchange for two bags of candy. I suggest you salvage the battery from an old power bank. Taking batteries from your child's tools not only costs you candy, but also subjects you to the wrath of your child's mother, which isn't a good deal. The module's plug is already assembled. All we need to do is connect the four wires from the USB cable of the keyboard to the module in the correct order. Before we start the modification, we need to test the module. This is the power switch. This is the USB socket for connecting the keyboard. This is the charging port of the module, and the charging chip is integrated into the circuit board. Let's connect the battery. Plug in the keyboard. Press the switch to turn on the power, plug in the receiver, and test it. Everything works perfectly. Remove the battery. Let's start the modification. The disassembly method varies for each keyboard. You can Google the disassembly method for your keyboard model. Using a disassembly tool, I successfully opened the shell. You can use an old bank card as a replacement. Now, we find the same plug on our keyboard from the supply plugs, leaving an appropriate length of wire. You can Google the disassembly method for your keyboard model. In the USB 2.0 specification, the white wire is for data negative, the green wire is for data positive, the black wire is for GND, ground, and the red wire is for VCC, power. If there is an extra black or yellow wire, it is a shield wire which is not necessary for our purposes and can be left unused. Now, we just need to connect these four wires to the module's plug. It's very simple. When connecting the plug, pay attention to the orientation, making sure the plug is inserted correctly before wiring, especially for VCC and GND. Do not reverse them as it can damage the device. Reversing the data plus and data will result in failure to recognize and abnormal operation. Switching them back will fix the issue. At this point, we have completed half of our work. Now, we just need to find a suitable location inside the keyboard to install the battery and the PCB with the wires. The battery and PCB are easy to find suitable positions for, as they are both then. To secure the battery, I needed to dig out a part of the reinforcement, which was easy. The space was perfect. The most difficult part was the placement of the switch and the charging port. Luckily, I found that the bottom white groove was just right for securing them. I just needed to dig out a little bit to fix them perfectly. In the end, I installed the power switch in the left white groove and the charging port in the right white groove. When modifying the shell, observe carefully. Don't cut too much at once. Cut a little bit at a time, then compare to see if it fits. If it doesn't fit, cut a little more. Although I only needed to dig out a little bit, I didn't have the right drill bit. 
In the end, I used the utility knife to dig out most of it, and then used the drill to tidy it up. It turns out that a sharp utility knife is the best tool for modifying keyboards. Show everyone what it looked like before cutting. Besides the utility knife, a properly sized round file should be the perfect tool, but I don't have one, so I can only use a utility knife. Using no blade for the utility knife, a sharp blade will make your work much easier. A file is more useful than a drill. Try to use a file to process the shell as much as possible. Adjusting and aligning the positions. Repeatedly test, cut, and adjust the position of the switch. After readjusting, the position is now very suitable. I will now secure the switch and drill holes for the wires. Here's a little trick. When securing the charging port, you can insert a data cable to adjust the position of the port. Now let's secure the PCB and the wires. Let's use a bit of hot glue to secure the PCB. We don't need much, just a little bit is enough. Do not use hot glue to secure the battery, as the high temperature of a hot glue can affect the battery's lifespan. It is recommended to use double-sided tape instead. Secure the wires at the reinforced areas to prevent them from being crushed. Hot glue doesn't need to be too much, just a little is enough. Excessive hot glue will make a mess inside your keyboard. Use electrical tape to cover the hot glue. The effect is perfect. Now let's put all the parts together. Be careful not to let the pins of the PCB pierce the battery, and do not press on the wires. It's hard to see any traces of modification, a very perfect modification. The modified module supports most of the multimedia keys on the keyboard. In fact, I searched for the perfect wireless modification module for a long time. This module really impressed me.